Hello guys, today we are going to take a look at this e-ink display. First, let's see what comes in the box. Here we have a nicely braided USB-C to USB-C cable, a microfiber cloth for easy cleaning, a plastic screen protector, and lastly, the display itself. This is the Terminal OG with the Clarity Kit, which includes a bigger battery, screen protector, cleaning cloth, and enables you to develop plugins for terminal devices. Now let's set it up, and then I will explain to you how it works shortly. So we flip the switch at the back to turn it on. Once it boots, we are prompted to connect to its local network. Once connected, we are redirected to a page where we can see all the Wi-Fi networks around us, and there we need to select the one we want the device to use and enter its password. After doing so, we are prompted to log into the terminal web panel and to connect the device to our account using the generated friendly ID. Once you make an account and add the friendly ID, you will be able to add different plugins or so-called recipes and make playlists with them to show all kinds of stuff on the display, for example, pictures, jokes, calendar, to-do lists, reminders, and many others. Also, you can set a custom update rate. Depending on it, the built-in battery could last anywhere from two to six months on one charge. There are some really useful device settings, such as sleep mode, which could further prolong the battery life. Now, let me shortly explain how it works. To start with, the e-ink display is just like any other one out there. Once an image is set, it remains on even after powering off. The controller inside is an ESP32, which is mostly in low power sleep mode and only wakes up for a few seconds every set period to ping the server and update the image, then goes back to sleep. As you can see in this example where I've made it connect to the hotspot on my phone, and here's what happens in a refresh cycle. I can hear you already screaming, well, well, what will happen if one day they decide to stop the servers for one reason or another? And here's where this device shines. It's completely open source. And so you can host your own service on, for example, a Raspberry Pi and point the display to it. And that's what I'm about to show you. You can read about how exactly the device and the environment work on their website and GitHub. There are a lot of different options for hosting the service yourself, and you can read all about them in the GitHub of the project. But for this example, I will stick with the Terminus and Docker, running on a freshly installed Raspbian OS on my Raspberry Pi 5. As you saw, I've just finished setting up the Raspbian OS. We need to open the terminal and run each of the commands you see in my cheat sheet, which will also be available in the description. First, we make sure that the system is up to date and then we begin by installing Docker. Once that's complete, we can proceed with cloning the Git of the Terminus project and running the script. Once initialized, we can open a browser on any computer connected to the same local network and go to the local website control panel where we need to register. Then we will need to unlink the device from our account on the official platform and link it to our local server. Once connected, you will have basically the same control over it as with their service but you will need to add every single plugin to be able to see it and use it. That's the only downside of the local setup, but I think the privacy and independence are well worth it. Also, knowing that your device can live long after the official support for it ends. The display comes with this kickstand, which is great for just placing it on your desk or counter, for example, and also a hanger hook so you can mount it on the wall. I think it would have been great if there were magnets as well, to enable it to stick to fridge doors, for example. But I guess you can always open it and add them yourself. In conclusion, I really like the display, as it does its job perfectly, and most importantly, its open source architecture makes it really versatile and future-proof. I think the design is really clean and simplistic, and I really like that it's available in a bunch of colors. In the description, you will find links to the Terminal GitHub and website where you can buy one for yourself and also learn more about it and how it works. As always, thanks for watching. Till the next time, bye!